Good morning, everyone. How are we doing today? Sunday, November 15th, and as promised in our daily financial news, which is, of course, a series we do every day at 7.30 a.m. Uh, I was going to give you some extra presentations today. And this first one is a deal breakdown. Some of you have asked for a deal breakdown. You've seen my walkthrough videos, which again is a playlist. Uh, I usually post two walkthrough videos a week. So you get to see the evolution from slumlord to pride of ownership. But now you're asking for, hey, show me the numbers. Generally speaking, I don't like going over the numbers. I don't like being, uh, I don't know, anything that says, hey, look at me. You know, I just, I don't like saying, hey, look, look at me. You know, I made this much money or whatever. Uh, but that said, uh, some of you have asked for kind of a deal breakdown, a, a job breakdown. So I went ahead and just took the last project and I put it together. Hopefully you like it. Uh, hopefully we'll talk about lessons learned and things like that. Uh, this is, should not be a presentation where you kind of fast forward and look to see how much money I made. That's, that's not helpful for me not, and certainly not helpful for you. So let's bring this up. Let's go through it together and let's see if we can't learn something. So again, we're gonna go through a deal in detail. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, here we go, get this out of the way, okay. So again, we're gonna review a deal before, after, we're gonna break, we're not only gonna say, hey, we spent 40 grand, we're gonna break down the chunks and, and talk about where the 40 grand went, for example. So first and foremost, if you don't know, uh, something I have invested in is creating an office, a real estate office in Fresno, California. It is called The Hub. Uh, if you're ever in Fresno and you want to come check it out, I have tremendous uh, real estate investment companies there, flippers, wholesalers, general contractor, licensed agents. It is really a location where if you want to you know, buy in Fresno, sell in Fresno, invest in Fresno, find a contractor, whatever it is, The Hub is a spot for you. Uh, I have lucky enough to have people and companies in there that I know, respect, use, and trust. Uh, so you can check it out. There is the address. It is 1567 North Van Ness uh, in the Tower District, 93728, right near uh, Fresno City College. Uh, it is a one-way street, so just be aware it's a, it's a one-way street. Uh, but yeah, you should come check it out. Uh, you will need to make an appointment. Uh, there's a phone number there, 559-500-6228. If you want, give it a call. Uh, the, we typically check the voicemail at least once a day. But again, that building is there. It's a resource. I have put my capital up because I see the hub being something to help you, help Fresno. And um, it's just a little bit of a way for me to give back. Again, there's cash buyers, licensed agent, licensed contractors, wholesalers, flippers, uh, all, all at that building. And again, they don't work for me. I have no employees. They're not part of my company. They're just people I know, trust, and respect uh, that are in that office building. And lastly, I do have one office building, uh, one office open. Uh, if you're in Fresno and you want to be around these exciting investors and teams, feel free to join. Uh, we'd love to have you. So here are some interesting deals about the project we're going to break down. First and foremost, I never set foot in the property. I never drove the property. Uh, this is an example of a project I could have done anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world. Uh, I, was, I bought, rehabbed, and sold this uh, project during this health crisis. Now, typically, I would lock this property up and I would go see it. I would walk the property with my contractor and make sure I had a feel for it. Uh, because of this health crisis, because um, just the decisions we're making here at home, uh, I haven't been to Fresno since January. Uh, so this was an example of a project I did sight unseen. Uh, obviously, I had trusted team members, checks and balances. I had team members checking on team members. I got two walkthrough videos a week. So I was definitely engaged. But again, never set foot on the property, never even drove by the property never been there. This project was bought, rehabbed, and sold without me going there. So again, you can flip properties remotely, uh, but obviously it takes a trusted team, checks and balances, and um, 
yeah, it's just extra, extra checks and balances in place. Uh, again, I had multiple resources checking on the checkers, right? We obviously had a contractor that I've used dozens of times, but I had a real estate agent checking. I had a, somebody from the hub going by and checking on it. And these people were just kind of checking the checkers. I got, I got validation and revalidation multiple times. Uh, again, uh, something we decided to do on this project is we decided to flip to an FHA buyer. That is something I've never done. We've done 51 flips before this one, but always to a landlord. It was just a business model I had. Um, I thought I'd give it a shot and see. Uh, so, you know, there are extra things that we are learning when you flip to an FHA first time buyer uh, that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Uh, something else we did because the market was so hot when this project was getting done, we actually listed it about 10 days before it was complete. I just wanted to give it a shot. Not normally something I would do, uh, but lo and behold, we sold this property for over asking before it was done. Uh, it was, I didn't expect it to go that way. I mean, we didn't even have, um, we didn't even have the granite yet on the cabinets in the kitchen and it was sold above asking. It was pretty funny. Again, it was listed and uh, sold before being complete, which was really cool. Uh, we had multiple offers uh, that weekend. We listed it on Friday, not complete. And we had offers over the weekend and we, ex we countered on Monday and we accepted one on Tuesday. Uh, we accepted a uh, price of 201 on a 199 list price. Uh, with the FHA process, process and all of the refis going on at the moment, uh, the appraisal process added four, almost five weeks to my hold time. This was something uh, I didn't budget. Uh, I didn't expect, um, you know, again, as we admitted earlier, I've never flipped to an FHA first time buyer, uh, but yeah, the, the appraisal process uh, was over a month <coughs> of extra hold time, just sitting there waiting for an appraiser to schedule and do the job. And again, it's because the appraisers are so busy right now. Most of them are doing refi work. Refi work is a lot easier than a rehab project, right? I took this slumlord property, turned it into a rehab, a beautiful property. It's just harder for an appraiser to do that. Even though I have video and pictures. And again, you could go through my walkthrough playlist and see the evolution of this property. But yeah, it's, it was, I didn't expect it. Four or five weeks of hold time extra. This was the plan. Uh, we were going to do a full gut slumlord to pride of ownership. We've done it 51 times in the last two years. Uh, we initially budgeted 35 grand and felt good about it. Uh, we thought we could sell it for 180 to a landlord. Uh, we would get between 12 and 1250 rent. So again, we've done it 51 times. It's kind of a cookie cutter process for us now, uh, but that was what we had planned when we bought it. The market was really hot, right? We bought this property. I think we bought this property in April, maybe March, late March, and we decided to do something different, as I mentioned earlier. We wanted to flip to a first-time uh, homeowner or owner-occupant, FHA ready. Uh, we thought we could get 199 when we did this plan. Uh, and something I did is I budgeted an extra three to five grand uh, on top of the first budget. And we spent all of the five grand, as you'll see in a minute. I figured there would be things that we would have to do for an owner that maybe we wouldn't do for a landlord or a renter. Uh, and again, FHA has much higher requirements. So we want, I wanted to be ready and not be surprised. And then something else we had to do, uh, just because I'm a very conservative investor, is when it was uh, fixed and sold and it was just sitting vacant, I did hire security to drive by the property five times a day just to make sure no bad stuff was happening. And knock on wood, that didn't happen. So that's good. But still, it cost me an extra $600 a month. Uh, and again, remember the uh, appraisal process took us an extra five weeks. So that was an extra $600 in cost uh, that I would not have had to spend if I'd flipped to a landlord because uh, I just would have put a tenant in and it wouldn't have been vacant. It's just things you have to learn when doing this business. So here's the property, a picture of the property before. Here's a picture of the property after. And again, we're going to start breaking down costs here. Let me get this picture out of the way. So exterior paint, I'm just going to round numbers here. Exterior paint, and then that fence that you see there on the left, that's a new fence. Um, exterior paint was $2,500 that you see on the top there. Uh, and then 
Uh, we did end up putting a new roof on the garage, which you see on the left. And we also added a fence or we replaced a fence. Uh, so the fence and the garage were about $4,000. Again, we're gonna break down where the money went. Here's the before kitchen, this disgusting, and they always smell. I don't know why, but they always smell. It was really, this wasn't the worst I've seen, but it was, it was up there. This is the kitchen after, and basically the kitchen uh, cost $6,000 roughly. Uh, and just so we know, I'm not including painting or flooring that is captured later. Uh, the kitchen is the cabinets, sink, uh, some plumbing, uh, granite, and the uh, backsplashes um, and cabinets, if I didn't say that. Uh, so it's about $6,000 spent in the kitchen. Bathroom, uh, this bathroom was pretty bad, lots of subfloor damage. Uh, so, you know, plenty of work to be done here. The bathroom was all, about $5,500. Again, total gut redo, um, tile. We, we took the uh, backsplash from the kitchen, put it there in the little soap uh, nook or whatever you call that, new toilet, new tub, new everything. The bathroom's completely new. That was about $5,500. Bedrooms, uh, they were disgusting and weird, just weird colors. Uh, so bedrooms uh, in, you know, living rooms, the, the interior was about $10,000. This is where flooring and painting is. Uh, all new doors, all new switches, all new baseboards. Um, yeah, 10,000 bucks, just a little bit over 10,000 for all the interior things. Uh, again, lights, uh, ceiling fans, doors, interior doors, exterior doors, uh, trim all the way around, flooring, tile, all that. Actually, tile was in the kitchen and bath, so that's already been included. Just uh, the LVT or laminate flooring uh, throughout the house. This is the uh, master bedroom. Again, look at that interesting color. So what we did here uh, is we capturing additional costs. You can see in the master bedroom, we have the dual pack there kind of in the middle uh, of the room uh, on the wall. Uh, we actually have two in a house this size, one for the master bedroom and one out in the living room. Uh, we did do new windows, new, new slider, um, about an extra, extra $8,000 in just mechanicals uh, in the house, uh, which is included. And then we did some work on the garage in the backyard just to trash it out, make the garage usable, uh, new windows you'll see in a minute. Uh, again, we also added a patio, that patio. Actually, we didn't add a patio, but we redid the patio. It was falling down, uh, so we did it to code. Uh, and again, you can see the window there added a security door. And again, you see the other side of the fence that was captured earlier and just cleaned up the backyard for an additional $4,000. So here's the deal, uh, kind of the cost summary of where the 166 grand went. Uh, purchase price 105, exterior 2500, garage fence 4000, kitchen 6000, bathroom 5500, interior 10 grand, mechanicals 8000, backyard 4000, selling costs about 14000, holding costs 7 grand. So all in uh, that's $166,000 went out. Uh, we did sell it for 201, and the total hold time uh, was 18 weeks. It should have been, in my opinion, more like 13 or 14 weeks, uh, but that FHA appraisal uh, was frustratingly long. Again, remember, uh, all this started with that office building at the hub. This hub is a resource center for you. If you're ever in Fresno, you want to check it out. Uh, if you're in Fresno and you want to be around other successful investors, come join. We do have one office available. If you are out of town, out of area investor, you must leverage the hub. I have licensed agents. I have wholesalers, flippers. I have a licensed contractor there for you. If you want a licensed general contractor, I have one there. Maritza, you can actually search on this channel. Uh, we have Maritza was nice enough to give us a full detailed breakdown of another project. You should check it out. Uh, but yeah, this was a, this was a fun project. Uh, again, we invested $166,000 uh, to turn that uh, slumlord property into a wonderful first-time owner home. 
So at the end, hopefully that makes sense. That is a full breakdown of a deal, start to finish. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, again, I tried to break down all the costs. I rounded them instead of going down to the penny. It's just easier to do it that way. Uh, again, we spent 40 grand and I call that project a success. Take care, have a wonderful day. If you like videos like this, make sure you subscribe, hit like. I do these things for you, so take care.